Hi everyone, and welcome to this workshop for Drupal Contribution. In this presentation, we will be covering what Contribution is all about, the benefits for you and for the community, the ways in which you can contribute, how to find issues to help with, and how to actually go about contributing to the resolution of those issues. We will also be seeing an example of how to work on an issue by creating a patch. Each of the segments of this presentation are listed with timestamps in the description attached with the video. Feel free to jump ahead, but we do recommend you watch the entire presentation. So why contribute? If you're using Drupal, you're using open source code and contributing to the open source community is how it survives. Without individuals contributing their time and effort, these open source projects would not be the incredibly powerful tools they are today. For that reason, any contribution you can make is of great value. However much you put into contribution, you will get more out of it in the form of experience, contacts in the community, and a sense of achievement. It will also help, hopefully make you feel more integral to the community and that you have had an impact. Those are a lot of benefits for something that might only take up a few hours of your time here and there. And remember, it's not all about writing code there are many other ways to contribute. You might be asking yourself, how can I contribute? Or you might know exactly what you want to do. There are many avenues for contribution, such as documentation, translations, knowledge sharing, theme and module development, Drupal promotion, and issue resolution in the Drupal issue queue. A lot of contribution work can be done with just having a Drupal.org user account. And then there are other areas of contribution which require the use of the issue queue to find and track ongoing issues that need work. For those who like diagrams, this could help guide you to your contribution effort. You might decide you do not want to write any code, but you do want to help with some accessibility fixes, as this is something you are passionate about. So by heading to the issue queue, you can find issues based around accessibility and do testing on them and provide feedback. For this, you will need to know how to use the issue queue. We will be going over the issue queue later on in this video. To jump ahead, look at the timestamps in the description. Feel free to pause the video here and look at the options, or reach out to one of the mentors in the Slack channel to find out about more options. We will cover the communication channels at the end of the video, and there will also be links down below. Everyone uses documentation, right? To find out about how to use a new feature or just to find some troubleshooting steps for something that isn't working quite right. Within Drupal.org, there's plenty of documentation in the form of official guides such as the Drupal user guide, evaluator guide and local development guides or community guides. These can all be found in Drupal.org slash documentation and the content provided is thanks to contributions of many people. There is always scope for more documentation and the best way to start helping with that is sometimes to ask yourself, what documentation have I needed in the past that was not available, and going from there. Anyway, on the Drupal.org site, if you see an edit button, you are free to suggest an edit to the content. In this case, it even states that the documentation needs updating. You can find a lot more information at Drupal.org slash contribute slash documentation. You can find the link down below. As you have seen in the previous section, Forms of Contribution, most roads lead to the issue queue. Here is where we find issues to work on. The word issue may imply problems, but think of it more as a to-do list. Some might be bugs, some might just be tasks that need to be done. The link to the issue queue will be in the description below this video, along with other links, and it is drupal.org slash projects slash issues slash drupal. Once in the queue, select advanced search and enter novice in the issue tags. That will help us find the simpler tasks that are great for beginners. Select Novice from the drop-down and click Search. There is also a short form URL to jump right to this filtered search, which is bit.ly slash novice dash q. Some issues will be suitable for novices to work on, while some other issues might already have a lot of comments and changes and might not be the best thing to try working on for the first time. 
this issue only has a couple of comments and might be suitable. Now that we know how to find an issue, we can look at how to contribute to the resolution of an issue. As mentioned in the previous section, forms of contribution, there are different ways to contribute. If you want to contribute with code, jump forward to the section Code Contribution. If not, keep watching. As we saw earlier, there are many ways to contribute without touching code, and without even using the issue queue. Even within the issue queue, there are lots of tasks that do not involve code. Reviewing and testing if a patch works, verifying if issues still occur, creating screenshots of issues, and much more. Here we can see that I have found an issue where there is a visual change made to a theme element and the change needs to be tested to confirm that it is meeting the requirements of the issue description. Testing this patch with simplytest.me and posting up a screenshot of the test would allow the issue to move along into reviewed and tested by the community, or RTBC. Information on using simplytest.me is available in the tools section later on in this presentation, and also in the tools link available down below. Contributing with code will mean creating patches using Git. Ideally, you would have a local development environment, although there are workarounds if that is not possible. We will be cov covering tool installation after this section. Patches are text files describing changes to the code, which in our context will contain all of the changes needed to resolve an issue. There are various guidelines for creating patches, and you can find them all under the URL bit.ly slash contribution dash resources. As always, the link will be available below and in that link, you will find guides for creating and uploading patches and also applying patches locally. You can also find the guide by searching for Advanced Patch Contributor Guide Drupal in their search browser. That is what I end up doing. Once we have a patch ready, we would come back to the issue queue and upload the patch. But first, we need to be able to make the code change. If you already have an environment capable of running Drupal 9.1.x, Git and the code editor then you can skip the tool section if you wish. Afterwards, we will be running over the creation of a patch. As mentioned previously, you will need some form of Drupal development environment, Git, and the code editor to get started. If you have those, feel free to keep using your current setup. What we're showing here is one way to do things, but it is not by any means the only way. For a quick setup, if you do not have local hosting already configured, you can try out the quick sprint tool found in drupal.org tools. I will be demoing the installation of that in a moment. You can also go to drupal.org slash project slash drupal to choose the latest development version and get the git clone command for that. Currently that version is 9.1.x and you can clone it with this command. Talking of git, you will need git installed. In some operating systems, it will be pre-installed and you can check if that exists by going to the command line and typing git and pressing return. The download link is available below and a copy of git for Windows is also available with the third-party tools in the tools download. Finally, you will also need some kind of text editor and it can be as simple as notepad or text edit, but we would recommend an IDE such as VS Code which is free and has lots of useful features such as code highlighting and many, many more. If you want to try out the local development tools, go to drupal.org tools and read the instructions. After reading through, you can go to the installation instructions. Here we get a link to the zip files themselves and the latest Drupal sprint package, which is what we want to download. To run the Sprint package, we need to have Docker running, which is a container platform for running virtualized environments. If you do not have that installed, you can download it yourself, or you can download the Quick Sprint third-party installs, which also contains a Windows Git installer. Most of the rest of the instructions are about the installation and configuration of Docker, and then we get to the installation of the Sprint package. As you see, my directory location is a bit different to that of the example, but the effect is the same. What this will do is install ddev, which is a container-based PHP development environment, and loads the latest development version of Drupal onto it. It will start a web server, a database server, mail server, and then provide you with local URLs to view the Drupal page. 
You can then make code changes in the local code base and create patches with Git when the time comes. If you are not able to set up a local development environment or do not wish to, you can also use simplytest.me. This is an online service that creates an on-demand sandbox for any version of Drupal Core or Drupal with selected modules, and you can also load patches at the same time. This means you could test out a patch from an issue and make sure that it works as intended without ever having to download anything onto your own machine. Here I'm going through the setup of a Drupal Core environment, in this case 8.9.x, and once it has gone through the process it presents a virtualized window with Drupal on it. To log in as administrator, the user is always username admin and password admin. Creating a patch. Here, I am finding an issue to work on, as if I were to make a patch for it. First, we find an issue and review what it is that is being asked for. In this case, it's a change in the inline documentation. It seems that someone has made a change and created a patch for it. But in subsequent comments, someone has suggested that the format of the sentence in English is not correct. This would make a great novice issue, and indeed it is marked as novice. If I was to work on this issue, I would comment that I am working on it, for as long as I feel I have time, or if it is during an event such as DrupalCon, you could say you are working on it as part of the contribution day. That would let others know that you are actively working on this issue, and if they want to, want to work on it with you, they can contact you and you can work on it together. Do not assign the issue to yourself as that is not recommended for core issues. Also note that this issue is for 9.1.x so that is the right version to use to patch against. In this case I have cloned the 9.1.x branch and I am using the advanced patch contributor guide. I am following the steps and creating a branch for this issue. Here, I am just making an example edit since I am not actually going to submit this patch. And then, following the steps in the guide, I am making a patch file which is generated from a diff between the local issue branch and the 9.1.x branch. Once that file is created, I would go back to the issue and type in what I have done and my reasoning for the change and then upload the file. In this case however, since there is already a patch in place, I might want to pull down that patch and apply it locally, then make changes to it. And I would actually need to follow the steps to create an interdiff, which is basically a file that says what the differences are between two patches. Once the comment with the files is submitted, someone will have the chance to test your patch and verify that the change was good. And then it can be moved along in the life cycle of the issue. You will have heard me talk about working together on an issue, and that is what the contribution events are all about. Meeting up with others, finding an issue to work on, discussing possible solutions, agreeing on one, delegating tasks such as patching, testing, screenshots, etc. And following through with the issue, ideally, to the point of reviewed and tested by the community, 
at which point the patch will be ready to be merged into the latest development version of Drupal and will become part of Core. I am sure that there are a lot of questions and during events there will always be mentors around who you can ask for guidance. Also, at any time, you will find friendly advice and support on the Drupal Slack contribute channel. If you have not joined Drupal Slack, check out the URL in the links below. Also, visit drupal.org slash chat for more information. Remember that you can contribute at any time, not just during events. There are core mentoring hours every week on Slack where you can get help, and there are many contribution days throughout the year. Thanks for sticking through to the end. All the links mentioned are in the description below, and do reach out if you need any help or more ideas on how to contribute. Thanks.